Here we go again. Another atmospheric river is moving in, bringing heavy rain, gusty winds, and days of potential problems to the storm weary Bay Area. So let's take a live look. Look at that. The sun setting on our last dry day for what could be a very long stretch. And some time lapse video from our tower camera in Santa Clara County shows finger like clouds creeping in across the blue sky. And on the ground, today was the day for those storm preps. We spotted this Contra Costa County Public Works crew lining a street in El Sobrante with sandbags. We've also seen plenty of property owners filling their own sandbags today to divert potential floodwaters. We spoke with one woman in Martinez who's getting sandbags for her daughter's home. So our daughter lives in Martinez in a townhouse, and they're at the bottom of the townhouse. Yep. And invariably, it always ends up leaking um, from the neighbors going into their patio. Because we keep saying, get sandbags, get sandbags. And oh no, we've got it under control. But it always ends up that it's still from January leaking. What a good mom. Highway 17 in the Santa Cruz Mountains, one of the big trouble spots in the last storm. Our chopper was overhead today as Caltrans crews shut down lanes to clear fallen trees. Also, a stretch of the highway will be closed southbound from Bear Creek to Summit Road from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. tomorrow and Friday. Work will shift to the northbound side early next week between Summit Road and Blossom Hill Road. All right, with all of that, let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Paul Hagan tracking this arrival of the storm and what we can expect. Yeah, we've seen these atmospheric rivers throughout the winter. Now another one headed our way. This one's going to rank kind of the middle of the spectrum on our one to five atmospheric river scale. This is going to rank as an AR3. What that means is a balance of, from a long term drought perspective, beneficial rain. The problem is we've had a lot of rain already this winter, and some recent rain chances this week have added more moisture to the soil, which brings the potential of flooding problems arising very quickly as the heaviest rain moves in tomorrow afternoon. Those flooding problems continue tomorrow night and into early Friday morning, also the potential for wind damage. So it's a balance of beneficial and hazardous with that type of atmospheric river. Some spotty showers out there tomorrow morning, but those are going to rapidly become more widespread and more intense. It is going to rain in the afternoon, continuing into tomorrow evening. A flood watch goes into effect at 1 p.m. tomorrow. While the flood watch goes all the way through 10 a.m. Sunday, it's really tomorrow night into the first half of Friday that we're most concerned about those flooding issues, especially any flood prone intersections on and off ramps, any ditches that can overflow onto the roads along with streams and small riverways. Also, a wind advisor goes into effect at 1 p.m. tomorrow. Wind gusts 20 to 30 miles an hour, sustained winds 20 to 30 miles an hour, gusts up to 50 miles an hour, certainly capable of doing tree damage and causing more power outages. So here's what to do before the storm arrives. Make sure your devices are charged up tonight and before the storm arrives tomorrow. And enable those emergency alerts on your phone. Go to the settings on your mobile phone and make sure those are turned on. It's usually towards the bottom of the screen. Still have some time this evening. The sun is about to go down, but there's still some light in the sky. Make sure the drains and gutters around your house are cleared out and if you live in a flood prone location know where you're going to go if a flash flood warning is issued we're going to be facing that threat as we head through this time tomorrow and likely through tomorrow evening and into tomorrow night we'll time it all out with feature cast coming up in just a few minutes all right thank you well you probably remember these images from that series of atmospheric rivers in january the storms left parts of gilroy and highway 101 completely underwater our jose martinez joining us live from gilroy where some people are still recovering from all of that damage and they're really worried that it could happen again you're Kind of in that calm before the storm, Jose. Yeah, that's right. I'm actually standing right inside one of those farms that was severely affected by the rain back in January. But I want Trevor to show you the real impact of this storm. And of course, it's been two months and now the farm workers are still working. You can see all the trash that was pushed by all the water that flooded in this area. We spent some time with them talking about how this is really affecting their lives. And this is what they said. As California braces for yet another atmospheric river, residents of Gilroy are taking precautions to protect themselves and their homes. This is a major flood right here. That's right. One of the primary concerns for them is the possibility of flooding. In the past, Gilroy has experienced severe flooding, causing damage to homes, businesses, and farms like this one. Ramiro tells me that last time, the water took away everything that was here. The tractors got flooded. They got about five feet of water in the house. So today, as the area braces for yet another atmospheric river, we spend the day with Ramiro Murrieta and Raul Vega, two Mexican farm workers who are incredibly concerned. Ramiro tells me 
They don't know what will happen to the land or the plant. Right now, everything is unknown and stressful, especially because their income depends on this farm. Raul tells me that since January 11, he has been here cleaning because the flood left many plants under the mud and many are drying up. Despite their fears, both tell me they are determined to do everything they can to prepare. Ramiro says they have no choice but to keep working. They tell me they plan to reinforce the banks of the nearby creek and do whatever they can to protect their equipment and crops. Ramiro tells me that they're not planning on working tomorrow because they don't know what's going to happen. He says this is not easy. Some of them are actually battling depression as this goes on. They're also working with their community to develop an emergency plan so everyone knows what to do if the worst happens. Right, and that plan includes this phone because they're going to keep sending texts and messages alerting other farm workers if an emergency actually happens tomorrow or Friday. Back to you. Yeah, that's so crucial to have that. Okay. Thank you so much, Jose. Appreciate that. Now, this storm will also bring the possibility of more falling trees, like the one that killed a woman in Cupertino over the weekend. 44 year old Vidut Natyal of San Jose was struck while hiking with her son and several other Boy Scouts in Rancho San Antonio Park. And authorities say the oversaturated soil under the tree just simply gave way, which is why local arborists are warning people to be aware of the conditions before the rain even hits. If you're worried about a tree, you can check for loose or hanging branches and cracks or changes in the surrounding soil. Every situation is different, obviously, but I mean, just like I said, being aware of your situation, being aware of your, your environment, your surroundings, better to do it preemptively, right? It's better to be proactive rather than reactive. So if you are a homeowner and you notice any potential issues, call an arborist to double check the areas of concern sooner rather than later. And if you do rent, you'll have to reach out to your management company or landlord and have them call someone to come out as soon as you can. And we certainly will be tracking this atmospheric river and the fallout over the next several days. Just head to KPIX.com for first alert updates and locations for where to get sandbags.